Hello everybody and welcome to my monthly video series where I take a look at all the light novels that are going to be released next month. This video is going to be covering December of 2017 and I apologize right off the bat because this is going to be a stupid long video because we have 25 light novels to talk about and even if I only took like two minutes for each title, that means this move, this video is going to be like 50 minutes long. So I'm going to be talking a whole lot. Um, so if you're new to this series, here was what I do. So I go through all of the titles when they're releasing any brand new number ones. I read the sort of back cover blurb so you can have an idea about what it's for. Then in the second half of the video, I read the blurbs from the back covers of the ongoing series. I do that because sometimes there's spoilers in later volumes, sort of little blurbs. And, uh, you know, I try to do my best not to do any spoilers for everybody. Now, if there is a title that you're interested in, in the description, I will list out the release dates as well as all of these titles. There'll be a timestamp so you can skip ahead to wherever that particular title that you're interested in is, is. And also in the description, I do have links to amazon.com as well as the book depository. If you want to purchase any of these titles, doing so earns a little bit of money for the channel, which I then turn around and buy more light novels with so that I can review them here for you. So I really do appreciate you making use of those links. So as I said, we actually have a crap ton of light novels coming out in December. It's so funny to me. I was saying to my wife earlier today, I'm like, you know, I remember only like two years or so ago when I thought I'm going to, there are enough light novels now that I can review one a week so I can make my channel all about light novels. Now I read two to three and I'm still way behind and have to drop series because there's just too much. And it's a great thing. I am not complaining other than, other than I really do wish that I, read fast enough I could keep up with everything because there's some kind of cool series that I wish I could have kept reading and I had to like put by the wayside. December is not only really a big month in terms of just releases in general, but we've got like eight brand new titles that are coming out as well as a reissued number one of a older light novel series that has been getting a little bit harder to find in print. So it's kind of along the same idea of what Seven Seas did just recently with Boogie Pop, which I reviewed and you should read because it was really good. Anyway, so with all of that said, let's get into the actual light novels because that's what you're here for and that's what's going to take up all of this time. So starting off December 4th of 2017, we have a brand new volume number one, this one coming from J Novel Club, and that is How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. In the MMORPG Cross Reverie, Takuma Sakamoto is so powerful that he is lauded as the Demon Lord by other players. One day he is summoned to a world outside his own, but with the same appearance he had in the game. There he meets two girls who both proclaim themselves to be his summoner. They perform an enslavement ritual to turn him into their slave. But that's when Takuma's passive ability, Magic Reflection, activates. Instead, it is the girls who become enslaved. Though Takuma may be the strongest sorcerer there is, he has no idea how to talk with other people. It is here then that he makes his choice to act based on his persona from the game. Amazing, but of course, I am Diablo, the being known and feared as the Demon Lord. That's my terrible acting. So begins a tale of adventure with an earth-shakingly powerful Demon Lord, or at least someone who kind of acts like one, taking on another world. So welcome to Isekai Land, and it sounds very much like the sort of a, lot, a little bit along the lines of Overlord in terms of the character arriving in this other world as his game persona and with all of his powers and everything intact. The only thing that kind of makes me a little on this is just that whole like slave thing. We've got a, we have so many wish fulfillment type light novels with OP boys who end up with all of this harem of beautiful girls who just fall all over them because they're OP or because, you know, the guy saves their life or whatever. Just having a harem start off because you're slaves? Eh. Eh. 
I know some of you are going to go, but Justice, you like the Rising of the Shield hero, and Reftalia is a slave in that. Well, yes, but let's recall that she was also freed and then chose to continue as Naofumi's slave, and Naofumi treated her very, very well. In a way. I don't know. Uh, whatever. There's just no winning. There's no winning. The minute you start talking slaves and everything else, it just, it just gets ugly. It just gets ugly. But anyway, so that's going to be a brand new series coming out. Um, you know, of course, I do my best to read all the new volume number one, so I'll be checking that one out when it releases early in December. December 8th, 2017, we have volume number five of Mixed Bathing in Another Dimension. This one, again, from J Novel Club, an ongoing series, one of the very few series that I have yet to read a single volume of. Um, and I'm not too sure why that is. I, you know what? I actually do have volume number one. And I keep thinking, I need to read that. I need to read that. And for whatever reason, I keep putting it off. So anyway, it is a slightly eshy type title, apparently. Uh, you know, obviously mixed bathing in another world. Yeah, you guys can probably figure out the setup on that one. On December 11th of 2017, we have from Cross Infinite World, volume number two of The Violet Knight. Now, Cross Infinite World doesn't have a whole lot of titles, but the ones that they do, they're kind of focusing more, as far as I understand it, on light novels that are aimed at a female audience. Uh, quite a number of them have gotten quite favorable reviews. I've yet to read one, which is really kind of lax in my part, but uh, they've got a couple titles that uh, they have released that sounded fairly cool to me. Uh, that one, Akaione, which is a vampire one, got some actually very positive reviews. Uh, the most recent one, um, I can't remember the exact title, but it was like, I'll be a secretary to a hero or whatever. It sounded really cool and, and sounded like it was kind of fun. I've really got to check out some of their titles, but uh, yeah, this is actually, I believe, the first of their series that gets a, vi a second volume. Uh, as far as I know, I think their deals are mostly just straight ahead with the directly with the author. A lot of these titles have never even been published in a format in Japan officially. They're just web novels. So I, it seems like they're a little like slower to come out with the uh, other volumes. So this one, uh, volume number two coming out in December. On December 12th of 2017, Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, volume number four. Now, this is the physical release coming from Seven Seas, another one of Seven Seas title deals with J Novel Club. Seven Seas doing a physical release of J Novel's translation. Uh, Grimgar, of course, been ongoing for a little while. They've got a couple of other ones that are coming up. Uh, Seven Seas actually just recently uh, said that they'll be doing physical release of How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. Very good series, by the way. Uh, so they're, they're kind of expanding it as they go. This one, of course, so volume number four will be coming out. On December 14th, we get another brand new volume number one, and again from J Novel Club. This one called Walking My Second Path in Life. Fie, first princess of Daemon, finds herself isolated and stranded in the foreign kingdom of Orstol, all by her lonesome, effectively having been wed off as a dowry gift in accessory to her sister, Princess Fiele's marriage. Trapped and isolated in a small back garden that once used to be a storehouse, Fie lives her days without purpose, and eventually without food, after the only member of her entourage, the chef, resigns. Just as Fie was about to give in to despair, she finds a pamphlet advertising a squire's test for the Royal Knights of Orstel, beginning her journey of friendship, hard work, and guts, along with masquerading as a boy, to walk her second path in life. What will Fie find along the way? So this is a brand new series, like I said, coming from J Novel Club, a female protagonist, uh, not something that a lot of J Novel Club titles have. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm very interested in checking out this title. Uh, first of all, it's not an isekai. Well, it, it's kind of plays on that rift, right? So it's not that you're summoned to another world, but you're an individual who's used to a certain kind of life who's now going to have to live a completely different life. So 
kind of still plays along those same lines. Plus there'll be that, I'm sure, a whole bunch of jokes and humor bits and, you know, kind of reveal type stuff played off the whole, like, I'm a girl but pretending to be a boy. So it could be kind of cool. Uh, I'll be checking that one out in December. On December 19th is when we get a whole bunch of the Yen On titles. Uh, we are getting a couple of brand new ones as well as ongoing volumes in ongoing series that are very popular, a number of which I have been keeping up with. So on December 19th, first up we have volume number 12 of Excel World, uh, a series that I have really enjoyed and been trying to keep up with. I haven't read volume 11 yet. I'm hoping to have that done before December 19th. We also get volume number five of the Asterisk War. Uh, this one I had dropped after the first volume. Uh, it's not that it was horrible. It's just it didn't grab me. And like I said, with so many light novels coming out, I just, I got to choose. I have to be picky and choosy. So that was one that I, I kind of let go. We also get volume number six of Bacano. Uh, again, a uh, very good series by the same author as Du Ra Ra Ra. Uh, I really liked the first volume, but uh, Yen On has been issuing them as hardcovers. I believe they've now started issuing them as uh, ebook as well. I initially kind of dropped it because as much as I liked it, it was just too expensive to be picking up hardback. Um, and now... I'm so far behind, I probably won't get back into it. But it is a very good series. It's a very good series. It, it really had nothing to do with the quality of the book that I didn't continue on with it. We also get volume number nine of The Devil is a Part-Timer. Another series that I have really enjoyed that I have kept up with, but I am behind. Volume number eight is sitting on my shelf. Again, another one that I'm trying to get read. Actually, it's the one that I'm reading right now. I'm I should have that reviewed this week, so I'll be caught up. That'll be good. I'll be fine with that one. We also get volume number four of Goblin Slayer. Goblin Slayer, great series. I read those as soon as I can. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that series. Uh, it's been really, really good. Um, much, you know, darker fantasy type. Uh, but, but yeah, I've really enjoyed Goblin Slayer. I'm looking forward, actually, to seeing what volume four is like. We also get volume number six of The Irregular at Magic High School. Now, this is one that I dropped after volume two. Um, I would say probably the biggest reason I dropped it was because I watched the anime. And it's very hard for me to get into light novels when I've already watched the anime. That's why I usually don't watch the anime. Uh, now, I, now, even if it's not licensed, I wait to see if we'll get a license before even watching the anime. Um, so that was mainly the reason there. Uh, also, I kind of found that the pacing of it was a little off to me. And again, it's just one of those things where if there weren't so many light novels to choose from and to read, I, I would probably keep reading it. But, uh, but you got to make the tough choices. We also get volume number 10 of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? This one, probably one of my favorite series. Um... Yeah, there's really not much else to say about it. It's, it's a really fun fantasy series that I have constantly been surprised by its ability to balance out uh, a bit of humor, a, a good deal of heart, as well as still addressing some slightly darker and more serious tones. Uh, it's It's been a really, really surprising series for me, and it's actually very much surprised me how every volume has been so consistently good, if not better than the one before. So really one of my, my favorite series, uh, and I will definitely be picking up volume number 10. And actually, we're really not far behind. Volume number 13 of that series is only coming out in Japan, I believe, in February of 2018. So we're not that far behind the Japanese releases on that one either, which is kind of cool. We also get volume number four of Konosuba, the ongoing hijinks of our band of misfits in a crazy isekai type world. Just this one's just pure fun. It's just pure fun, pure laughs, pure jokes, pure fun. I read this. The, the volumes are never really that thick. They're a pretty easy, quick read, and I always get a laugh out of it. So that's pretty much why I've kept up with that one. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just a lot of fun, that series. I really enjoy that one just for the, the jokes of it. 
We also get volume number three of Roca, Braves of the Six Flowers. Yen, you're just killing me this month. So many titles and I keep up with most of them. Um, this one, uh, I read volume one and two, really enjoyed it. Volume number one in particular was just like such a, a change. It's a fantasy series, uh, but the first volume introduced like a very much like a mystery trope, which is the locked room mystery. It was intelligent in its handling of it. The characters are very interesting. Volume number two was just as good, even though it was very different in its construction. Um, one of the things that's interesting about that series too is that the villains are all kind of, like they all have very interesting motivations. They're not just clear cut good bad guys, even though the heroes are fighting against demons. It's, it's a really interesting series. I, I really do recommend it. Um, it's one that uh, I would say has been a very pleasant surprise to me. It's not a very long series either. I think there's only six books in the series. So it's not one of those series that you're in for like a 20 volume commitment, which is kind of appealing to me too, because it means that I can actually get through a whole series and do it relatively quickly. So yeah. Also, we get volume number 12 of Sword Art online again another one that i'm keeping up with uh this one of course the ongoing alicization arc um i it left at a very interesting place in volume number 11 so i'm i'm, I'm very very curious to see what happens in volume number 12 and where it goes from here uh watch my review if you <laughs> but yeah it, it's you know what the alicization arc has been very surprising to me it has had some very good points but it's had its share of low points too but overall i i think it's fairly decent it kind of sometimes when i'm reading it makes me think that this is what kawahara wanted sword art to be initially but couldn't because of how that series began it's interesting um but yeah a very very different take it's it's taken sword art to a very different spot then we get a brand new volume number one from Yen on this one. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Living alone and never having had a girlfriend, 37 year old Satoru Mikami is dissatisfied with how his life has turned out. But after dying at the hands of a robber, he awakens to a fresh start in a new world as a slime monster. <laughs> um, I, you know what? I, I, I'm i going to hold withhold judgment on this one because when So I'm a Spider, So What was announced and when it was coming out, I thought this is going to be terrible and I thought it would be really hokey and I found that I kind of enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to give this one a fair chance. The only thing... The only thing that I am a little bit concerned about is that I saw some manga pages that makes it look like this series is quite a bit eshy. Um, the whole thing about how the slime can be hugged tight to girls' breasts. And yeah, anyway, I, I think this one's going to be a little naughtier than, uh, than, than some of the others, but uh, we will definitely give it a try. <laughs> Now, this is the title that has been reissued uh, as an ebook for the first time, and that is Kieli, volume number one. Uh, this series was one of Yen's older series, the same as like Book Girl, um, and I guess Spice and Wolf, it all kind of was at the same time. This series doesn't really seem to have gotten a lot of love in the community, at least not that I see a lot of. There's a few people that are definitely very passionate about it, but uh, I don't think it's gotten the widespread appeal. But... This one now coming out in ebook, so it'll be very easy to find and a little bit cheaper. I'm definitely wanting to pick it up. Kieli sees ghosts. It's an odd ability for a 14 year old girl, and it makes her a bit of an outcast at her boarding school. Her only friend, in fact, is the semi departed spirit of a girl who used to inhabit her room. That is, until, sh until the two encounter a young man who appears to share Kieli's gift. It doesn't take long to discover, though, Harvey is an altogether different sort of creature, one of the infamous Undying, the reanimated corpse of a dead soldier. 
Could it be that in this cursed fellow, Kiele has finally found a kindred spirit? Throwing in her lot with this strange, soulless man and his possessed radio, she means to find out. It just sounds so different from almost everything that we have. Uh, that element of like supernatural, maybe a little bit of horror. I'm, I'm looking forward to checking this one out. It's one of those ones that I kept looking at and seeing like, wow, I'd like to pick this up, but I kept putting it off just because it would be hard for me. Like some volumes seem to be available. Some aren't on the, the websites that I shop from. So yeah, so I'm really glad this one's getting an ebook release and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Also, we get another brand new number one. This one, The Saga of Tanya the Evil, volume number one. At the very edge of the front lines stands a young girl. She has golden hair, blue eyes, and pale, almost translucent skin. This girl soars through the skies, mercilessly cutting down her enemies. She barks crisp orders with the unmistakable voice of a child. Her name is Tanya de Grutchev. But her true identity is that of a 40-year-old Japanese elite salaryman who was forced by God to be reborn in the vessel of a little girl who must live in a tumultuous world racked by war. Concerned with being ultra-efficient and desiring self-promotion above all else, the Grutchev will join the ranks of the Imperial Army's military mages and become one of the most feared existences in this new world. Again, a reborn isekai type title, but man, I I just it sounds so cool. I, I and and the clips that I saw from the anime, I knew it was based on a light novel, so I held off. But uh, I've heard some really good things from people about the anime. I know there's quite a few people very excited to be getting this series. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out in December. Now those are the end of the Yen titles, but also on December 19th, we get a brand new volume number one from Seven Seas. And this one is Monster Girl Doctor volume number one. In the town of Lindworm, where monsters and humans coexist, Dr. Glenn runs an exemplary medical clinic for monster girls with his Lamia assistant, Safi. Whether receiving a marriage proposal by a centaur, injured in battle, palpating the injury of a mermaid, or suturing the delicate wounds of a flesh golem, Dr. Glenn performs his job with grace and confidence. But when an unsavory character seeks to steal a harpy egg, how will the unflappable Dr. Glenn respond? Monster Girls light novel. Come on. Most of this kind of stuff's only in manga, so I'm kind of interested to see how this plays out in a light novel. Um, yeah, so that'll be coming out December 19th. Now, also on September 19th, this is a title that I covered in my November video because it was supposed to be out this month, but they delayed it, and that is Record of Lotus War, The Grey Witch. Um, again, this one coming out now, it's scheduled for December 19th. Uh, Parn, a reckless but passionate swordsman, embarks on a quest to discover the source of a great evil overwhelming the country of Lotus. Joining him are Deedlet, a young elf wielding powerful magic, Gim, the toughest stone's dwarf, Eto, a fledgling priest, Slain, the group sorcerer, and Woodchuck, their indispensable thief. Together, this iconic group will join forces to discover the truth behind a world torn apart by ancient deities and wield the power needed to defeat the Grey Witch. Now, I said in November, and I'm going to say it again, I have very, very fond memories of the Record of Lotus War anime. It was one of the very first series that I purchased on VHS tapes back in the day. Uh, yeah, it, it, it blew me away. It was one of the first, it was one of the very, very earlier series that I got into. Um, and that the animation was just, I thought it was really beautiful. The story was engaging. So I am really, really excited that we're getting Record of Lotus War and I'm really looking forward to checking it out. On December 20th from J Novel Club, it's another volume number one. And this one is Ao Oni Volume 1. Shun is the new kid in school, but he's already managed to attract the attention of the school bully, 
who is now making his life a living hell. It doesn't seem like things could get any worse, until the night he finds himself and a group of his classmates inside a creepy abandoned mansion known as the Jailhouse. They quickly start to hear strange sounds and see weird things, but everything escalates when they realize they can't get out. Once they're trapped inside, a blue, unnaturally large figure chases after them. Is it a new species? Or is it the ghost of their old classmate who died in an accident? Nobody knows, but one thing is for certain. If it catches them, they're dead. The scariest game of tag in history begins. Now, I believe this is based on a video game, I want to say. I know there was a video game, um, but they've also done like a live action movie. Like there's all sorts of stuff that this series uh, seems to have evolved from this series. Um, but it is a horror light novel, which is kind of cool. We don't have a lot of those. Um, in fact, J Novel Club has another horror type light novel uh, later this month that I'm going to be talking about that's definitely based on a video game. And so I'm kind of excited to see these more like horror type light novels come out. Uh, the only other really horror type light novel that I can think of off the top of my head is Another, which I haven't read because, again, it was one of those ones that I watched the anime back when I didn't think we'd ever get light novels in English. Um, so yeah, I, I've never read the actual novel, but uh, the anime was awesome. I couldn't stop watching the anime. It just really good. Um, if you haven't watched the anime, read the book because I've heard that the book is excellent as well. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. On December 23rd from J Novel Club, we get volume number four of Ari Ferretta, the isekai with the main character who started as a happy-go-lucky otaku and then became a badass OP character that don't give a damn about nobody but the girls he loves. Yeah, then, then there's guns and motorcycles and... Humvees and and a fantasy world. Yeah. You know what? It is like a guilty pleasure. I, I can't really think of any other way to put it. It's it's not a stunning light novel, but it it has its moments. It definitely has its moments. On December 24th, volume number four of Blue Steel Blasphemer. Uh, this is actually the last volume of this series. It's a pretty short series, only four volumes. Um, I've reviewed volume number one. It was fairly decent. Um, I do have volume two, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to get through two and three so that I could read this one because um, I want to finish it. I mean, it's a sh relatively short series. This is by the same author who wrote uh, Chica the Coffin Princess and who is also the author of Outbreak Company, which J, J Novel Club has just started to release. And funny enough, I just reviewed, and it was pretty good, actually. Um, you can look at the review if you want. Uh, but yeah, it was, it surprised me. Started off, eh, but got progressively better as the book went on. Then on Christmas Day, December 25th, we have Yume Niki, I Am Not In Your Dream. This is a standalone novel. Again, it's from J Novel Club. This is the one that's based on a cult classic sort of indie game. Based on the cult hit freeware game by Kikiyama, the dreamlike novelization of Yume Niki follows a lonely and mysterious girl from the confines of her tiny, sparse bedroom into the infinite world that awaits her when she falls asleep. She roams through shifting scenery and opens doors leading to bizarre, nonsensical dreamscapes, all places that may hold more than a metaphorical significance to her. But here, in the deepest reaches of her unconscious mind, is she truly alone? Again, another sort of like horror-ish type series. I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Like I said, I always get excited when there's like something comes out and it sounds different. Like it sounds like it kind of breaks the mold and doesn't follow any kind of like typical routine or trope in light novels. I'm, I'm very, yeah, I get excited by that because I read a lot of light novels, as you mostly all know. Finally, on December 29th, we have volume number seven of My Big Sister Lives in a Fantasy World. And I believe this is the last one of this series too. Either that or it's just that it has caught up to where it is in Japan. I'm not too sure. 
Um, I, there's nothing beyond this in Japan, uh, but having not read the series, I don't know if this book ties things up. So I guess you can let me know in the comments down below if you have any idea. So those are all of the light novels releasing in December of 2017, all like 25 of them. Uh, wow, there's a lot. Uh, again, I will have all the release dates as well as the titles in the description down below, as well as the buy links for Amazon.com and the book depository. If you want to pick those up, it helps me out, helps the channel out, which is fantastic. And I really do appreciate, uh, also, uh, I am going to read the blurbs from all of the ongoing series now. If there's any that you're particularly interested in, I'll have a timestamp next to the title in the description as well, so you can skip ahead, and that way you can skip over any that you don't want to have spoiled because you're not caught up yet. So, going all the way back to December 8th of 2017, Volume 5 of Mixed Bathing in Another Dimension. After learning from the goddess of water that Haruno and her party are in jeopardy, our hero Toya sets sail to an underwater city to save them. They finally reunite after a monstrous encounter along the way, only to be met with yet another shocking revelation. Meanwhile, Haruno hasn't forgotten the promise she made long ago, to take a bath together with everyone. Toya's unlimited bath can hardly be called just a bath anymore, but this time it'll be filled with more bare skin than ever before. I, why haven't I read this series yet? <laughs> December 11th from Cross Infinite World, The Violet Night, Volume 2. A great darkness sweeps across Aridol, just as Yuki Kasuga finds herself abandoned and cursed. As fear and death consume the three kingdoms, Yuki must survive the hostilities of a foreign world without the protection of her violet knight. Join Yuki as she embarks on a deadly journey and takes on an enemy ordinary means can't defeat. What will become of the girl determined to find her knight as she fights to discover who she really is? Find out in the exciting second volume of this dark fantasy light novel series. December 12th, Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, Volume 4, Physical Release. Don't scare me like that, Moguzo. Sorry, sorry. Moguzo let out an embarrassed laugh and scratched the back of his head. Still... He sure is bleeding a lot, Haruhiro thought. With all that blood, it's impossible to tell what kind of face he's making. But, well, it looks like he's fine somehow. Haruhiro and his party reached the end of one major battle. However, with there being some comrades they couldn't save, they couldn't be entirely happy with how things were. Meanwhile, because they managed to accomplish more than anyone had expected, some members of the party receive offers from other teams wanting to poach them. As Haruhiro agonizes over what to do as a leader, he is forced to come to grips with what the party wants to do once again. The story of adventure born from the ashes now enters a new stage. December 19th, Excel World, Volume Number 12. A new hotshot burst linker appears, taking Silver Crow down. Haruyuki, still struggling to obtain the theoretical mirror ability, sees Wolfram Cerberus as a roadblock in his larger quest to get stronger and defeat Archangel Metatron. He soon meets Chocolate Puppeteer, a dual avatar made out of... chocolate? With her help, Will Silver Crow finally grow into the fighter all seven legions need to successfully carry out their mission against Metatron? The Asterisk War, Volume 5 The fight for glory and entertainment continues in the fifth installment of the Asterisk War from Yu Miyazaki. The first match of the Phoenix semifinals, Despite being faced with ARD's learning capabilities and RMC's flight unit, Saya's efforts and Kirin's Renzuru help them fight back. 
However, the tag from Arlequint have a trump card up their sleeves. On the other hand, Flora's kidnapping has been discovered, the culprit demanding the sealing of the Cervista. Suspecting Rewolf Intelligence Organization, Grimalkin to be involved, Ayato heads to the redevelopment area and meets a mysterious girl. Akano, Volume 6 The year 1933 A storm's brewing in New York City as tensions among the families rise. When Jacuzzi Splot and his gang is seen operating on the Gandor family's turf, Luck Gandor employs a young woman named Maria to protect their family's negotiator, Tick Jefferson. Maria, with her katana and Tick with his scissors, they're a well-suited duo, and they both love to cut people. However, their violence only spawns more violence. Meanwhile, by the Hudson River, an immortals group named Larva finds a new person to add to their ranks. The events from the last three years are about to catch up with a particular immortal from the Martillo family. The Devil is a Part-Timer, Volume 9 When Amelia the Hero is in danger, she finds an unlikely ally in the Devil King. Unfortunately, with Ashia kidnapped by Gabriel, the team is seriously lacking in manpower. Mao and Suzuno team up, traveling undercover through Ente Isla on a rescue mission, and a mysterious girl claiming to be Alice Ramos's younger sister tags along. Meanwhile, Emmy and Alice Ramos get caught up in the middle of Olba's schemes. The sides among angels, demons, and humans, and who's good and who's evil, come crashing down. Goblin Slayer, Volume Number 4 Goblin Slayer, Spearman, and Heavy Warrior received a dangerous quest to bring the fight to the demon's castle. As they steel themselves for the challenge that lies ahead, Cowgirl and Priestess have a casual day out on the town. High Elf Archer tells a story about how she, Dwarf Shaman, and Lizard Priest came together, overcoming racial grudges to become close party members. The Irregular at Magic High School, Volume Number 6. Now, I am going to be very honest. All Yen had for this was high school drama meets high powered action in a world where magic is the new science. Don't miss the latest installment of The Irregular at Magic High School. And this is Volume 1 of the Yokohama Disturbance Arc. That's all they had, so it's not a lot to go by. Someone obviously just put in a placeholder for the listing, but uh, has not updated it as of yet. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon, volume 10? After encountering intelligent monsters in the dungeon, Belle and Wayne share a tearful goodbye as Hestia Familia return to the surface short one member. But not long after their parting, the guild confirms the existence of armed monsters and immediately calls on Aurorio's strongest to exterminate this threat. Bell is forced to make some of the hardest decisions of his life when he's the only thing standing between a massacre of monsters and adventurers. Konosuba, Volume Number 4 When adventurers are stressed and tired, there's only one place to go. Hot Springs. Kazuma and crew head to a town well known for their amazing open-air baths and atmospheric surroundings. The only problem is that it's also famous as home to the Axis Church. Aqua couldn't be more delighted to visit all her cute followers, but the others have heard more than enough stories to be afraid. Roka, Braves of the Six Flowers, Volume 3 the Braves have still not identified the imposter among them. When Goldolf takes off to help Nashatanya, the initial seventh Brave, the group begins to spec suspect him of aiding Tagurniv. But what is the fiend plotting? Sword Art Online, Volume 12 Yujio has finally met Alice again, but she's no longer the same girl he once knew, now calling herself an Integrity Knight. Even worse, 
The reason for Alice's unexpected return is to capture Kirito and Yujio. December 23rd, Volume 4 of Ari Ferretta. With their business in Ur concluded, Hajime and his party returned to Furin. After getting Yue, Sheya, and Tio their status plates, Hajime decides to rest in the city for a while. But as always, if he doesn't go to trouble, it manages to find him. During a date with Shea, he runs afoul of a shady underground organization. There, he rescues a girl named Mew and becomes her father? December 24th, Volume 4 of Blue Steel Blasphemer In Yukinari's town of Friedland, a resident suddenly dies a mysterious death. At first, it's thought to be a murder related to the recent battle, until people find out that there was an eyewitness. Yukinari decides to handle the investigation himself, only to find the words, Amano Yukinari, scrawled in Japanese at the scene. It's the stunning final volume of the alternate world battle action series, Blue Steel Blasphemer. Finally, December 29th, Volume 7 of My Big Sister Lives in a Fantasy World. The Divine Vessel's War is reaching its conclusion, but with Soul Reader gone, Yuichi wants nothing more than to drop out. But will he really be able to go back to the normal life he's always wanted? And if he does, will Mutsuko ever speak to him again? So those are all the light novels releasing in December of 2017 if you've watched the entire video from beginning to end thank you so much for hanging in there i really do appreciate it because I, I know it's all been a long one so with all these books releasing in december which are the ones that are definitely on your to buy list what are you most excited about with the bunch of brand new series starting in december which ones are you most looking forward to let me know in the comments down below if you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels, you should consider subscribing. I do two to three light novel reviews every single week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.